Right, my name is Rob Hudson. I'm a, a platform engineer for Hilton uh, mobile team. And what that really means is business analyst, technical wrangler sort of person who knows a little bit about technology. So I'm going to caveat this whole thing with I, uh, I just know a little bit about what I'm talking about. It's mostly from personal experience, but uh, hopefully it helps you a little bit. And then I'll be asking you for lots of help if you have uh, any crumb snatchers of your own at home. I have three, and uh, I've done my best to keep them away from everything that I could possibly control for a long time, and then it, uh, it, it stopped being able to happen. So as a BA, I, I, I think about things in terms of requirements and pictures. Um, so when I think about my kids and the internet, I, I sort of group them in the age ranges. I have one that's nine, probably acts like the middle school chicken. Um, Two that are five, they have no interest yet in technology, although when, when they see my, my phone, they try and grab it. Almost every one of them tries to leap as far as they can ahead to do all the things that I do, right? And I don't even trust myself to do all the things that I do, and that's supposed to be legit, right? So I've tried to think of things in terms of what each one of these groups would, would sort of want or be able to do. And I, I, I kept the kids away from tech for a long time, first three years. Um, now, as I started researching this topic a little bit, I actually found out there's some things that you should be doing when the kids are zero through three, uh, roughly. And one of the things that I learned about uh, was that there's people actively trying to steal your kids' identities as soon as they're born, as soon as their social security cards are issued. So that's the first scary thing that I learned. I'm sure there's much to follow. So I, <laughs> there are uh, copious services out there that'll protect that, and I should probably look into that. Uh, I'm going to try and take some of my own recommendations. Um, when I met with my old, oldest daughter, Coraline's kindergarten teacher, uh, when she was in the three to five range there, she immediately asked, and she, she tried to be really subtle about it so as not to offend me, I, I, I guess, uh, what about tablet time? How often does your kid use a tablet, all this stuff? And, and I asked her why, because I, I tend to keep my kids away from that stuff, maybe to my detriment. And she said, because some kids don't have motor control to even pick up a pencil when they come to school. They've been using a tablet so long, they're swiping and they have no ability to pick things up and do, 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 excuse me, do things other than just touch a screen and move stuff on a screen. That was a little startling to me. Um, and again, people make their own decisions about when they introduce tech. I'm just talking about my thing. And as my, my oldest daughter started getting into uh, school, uh, of course, all her friends have phones or some of them do, the ones I don't like to, of course, right? Uh, all the in-laws that I have grudges with, of course, have phones, maybe that's coincidental. Uh, so it took me a long time to think about getting her some kind of device at that range. And I ended up talking to probably many of you and buggy to death about what to get. And there aren't a lot of great options. I guess companies don't want kids to have devices that only do one thing that they can't ad advertise to. So I ended up getting her a phone watch and it has just the right amount of restrictions for me. Uh, she can text fixed messages to certain people. Uh, she can call pe people, and it's, it's an average device. Durability is kind of terrible. I think it's called the Gizmo, too. Some of these seem to be tied to carriers, although I understand that carriers say that they're not a anymore, but who can say, right? Um, I know T-Mobile has something. Jake was telling me about it. Um, AT&T probably most certainly has something, and Apple now has some kind of watches that can do things. Now, I, I don't know if this is true anymore, but I was always afraid these things are so expensive. Get, get my kid an Apple Watch. What is that, 500 bucks? Maybe I'm, maybe not anymore. <laughs> what, what's going to happen? She's going to bust it. So I'm less worried about the security of her at that point and more about the security of the device. Um, so I haven't wanted to go to the next step, which is everyone tells me in middle school when the kids do sports, they have to have phones. I don't know if that's true or not. I'd sooner give her gizmo, but people are saying, right? And people People make decisions for me. Um, so I'm trying to th think through through that whole thing. Uh, and I've been a big control freak about it. I don't know what the, what the hell I'm going to do when she actually gets here or to this point. And then whatever happens after that, although I think the dumpster fire probably moves closer to the uh, middle school and high school range. Uh, I started to think about things uh, in terms of what the scope of my problem was with the requirements, right? Since you can take these little thingies anywhere, those things anywhere, it's pretty much the whole world, which causes me to have a lot of problems. So I'm kind of a control freak. 
and it doesn't work out so well. I tried to think of the things that I could control. I've had many interesting discussions with the school. Is, is Charlie here? <laughs> Charlie Reisinger runs the uh, technology for the school that, I, that Coraline goes to, and I've uh, bothered Charlie a lot. I had a lot of drama with that um, in, in the course of trying to figure out what I could con control. The kids get Chromebooks now, and uh, I guess the school lets them look at YouTube for some educational purposes, and YouTube and I ha have, have a big, bad relationship. Uh, I, I've been against it and it sort of became my white whale, I, I guess. And I uh, went to the school and complained that they were letting the kids look at YouTube during their after school program. And I soon realized that at the end of the day, uh, I don't really have a lot of control over what the school does. Uh, and talking to other parents, they get afraid of that. And that now you have a device you're bringing into your house and you have no control over it, which isn't exactly true, right? We, we, we probably know that's not exactly true. But the other thing that I've discovered too is that kids aren't supposed to have phones on the bus but you, you think they bring them on the bus? Yep. And they do whatever they're allowed to do or not allowed to do with their phones. And these are uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders who have a lot of bad ideas, and social media is very easy to get onto. So I had to think about uh, what, my, what our personal photo and video policy was for our children <laughs> when they get on the bus, right? Um, I had to have that talk with my daughter as I was re researching this. I said, you know, people aren't allowed to take pictures of you, not allowed to take videos of you, because lots of bad things can happen. Um, so I've kind of struggled with how to deal with that and uh, how to tell my kid things. I don't want to scare her to death because I scare myself to death just reading about things, right? So I, I realize that pretty much the only, the only control that I have of any kind is going to be in the home, and I have to be careful how I exercise that. Uh, the other place that we have lots of challenges is when she goes to friends' houses, right? They could be doing anything. Her one friend gets a tablet. She has the goes out to the yard and gets on YouTube and all kinds of things. She has Snapchat. God, I had to remember the names of these terrible services. TikTok, Facebook, all this crap. And when she's at her friend's house, I have to figure out what, what to do then. I can't really threaten her because that doesn't work for anybody. I'd love to if it worked. I, I won't lie. If I could say never touch that and I knew it would happen. But I've sort of learned uh, a couple ways that Trying to make my kid more scared of me than of the world is probably not going to be the best thing. But I really wanted to. You know, when your kid runs across the street the, that first time and you want to grab him and shake him and make him scared of you so they don't do that again, that doesn't really work with this stuff for some reason. So those little parenting techniques that I learned uh, growing up <laughs> aren't great. There's a lot of families like uh, some of my in-laws, very kind of hapless, and they kind of turn on the router, let the kids play with their phones. That's been a hard one for me because I don't want them to do that, but I also don't want to run in and say, don't let them play with their damn phones. <laughs> my, like, Coraline's on the app store the first day, and she finds some app that had some kind of pregnancy ad. She's eight, and there was a birth control shooter game. <laughs> like, how? My wife told me about it, and I said, how the hell did it happen? Well, my parents let her use the phone. I'm like, can this really happen? I mean, I guess it does because we must just filter this stuff, right? When you're looking, you see an ad. I was complaining about the newspaper ads. I see an ad, I'm like, oh, geez, that's nasty. Yeah, whatever. That's kind of funny. Not for my kid, but I didn't realize this stuff was just coming at kids, and I didn't see it from her perspective until she asked me questions about things that I wasn't ready to answer yet. So <laughs> I've had to be ready to answer certain questions. Uh, one that uh, birth control doesn't work like space invaders, as far as I know. <laughs> things might have changed in the 10 minutes since I prepared this presentation. But I'll move on. So when I think about threats, <laughs> Uh, there's so many, right? Um, the biggest one is this one. This is what we're all wor worried about, that somehow your kid's going to get hooked up with some creepo and wind up somewhere they don't belong, both virtually and physically. And that's the thing I've struggled the most with, right? You, you tell your kids not to give their information out. They go to school. They, they talk about that. But I think in some ways, um, I don't know, all, all kids are different, but my daughter is very afraid to be in trouble. She's very afraid to call attention to herself. She's very hesitant to talk about things. So when I went into the school busting someone's chops about letting them use YouTube to maybe look at something maybe bad, I kind of spooked her. And I realized that uh, if I'm not careful, I don't know if she's going to wind up in a van with a creepo, but it's very tough for me to navigate the personal aspects of technology and making my daughter not, not afraid to tell me things. And I think at the end of the day, you know, when, when you walk on the street, you're going to see, see things. When you're on, on the bus, you're going to see, see things. And I have to be really careful that I don't 
get her freaked out about things because I get freaked out. Uh, so I try to make a joke out of things now to some, some extent, right? But um, that's just kind of my big, big warning. If you crack down on the kids, some of the kids with the personalities, they just don't want to tell you. She doesn't want other people to get in trouble. She's afraid. This is something that happens. She's afraid that if she breaks a rule and goes on YouTube, which isn't a big deal, really. I mean, at the end of the day, she went to a website she shouldn't go to. But she saw that as being a big enough deal so that if something worse happened, let's say she went on social media and she ended up talking to somebody, I think she would have been afraid to tell me because she made the little tiny transgression of breaking daddy's rule and then something I can't even comprehend happened. So the biggest learning thing for me so far, and I haven't mastered it yet, is how to make her understand she's not going to be in trouble, but that a little bit of trouble is not a big deal compared to what could happen. So my, my parenting structure and the, the, the technology around my wetware up here has really had to change a lot. Um, the other thing uh, that I've struggled a lot with is blocking bad content. And I'll talk about that technically a little bit. But I'm not sure the best approach for this. I, I've seen the net nanny things. I've seen all the device level things. Uh, people tell me kids can get around them. I, I don't think I was in a generation where I had to do that because no one understood stuff like that back then, 1986. <laughs> my parents just knew that the phone was uh, making funny sounds when they picked it up, and they get pissed off about that. Um, so this one bothers me a little bit, and I don't know exactly how to, how to handle it, but I'll talk about some approaches with that. Um, this is one of the reasons I hate YouTube. It's not just the ponies. So my, um, I, <laughs> this is supposed to be a slide about violence, but I'm having trouble not laughing about it. <laughs> So my brother-in-law's kid was uh, surfing on YouTube, and uh, someone made a My Little Pony fan video and slipped it under the YouTube. Very, they're very strict and careful <laughs> standards, right? And she ended up watching a Texas Chainsaw Massacre starring the My Little Ponies, perfectly animated, down to the de details. So that kind of crap scares me. Someone maliciously and deliberately tried to sneak that in so someone would, would see that. So. This is one of the reasons that I, I really freak out about this and try and lay down on this. And I'm, I'm not sure the exact a answer to fixing that. But for me, I uh, block YouTube at the house, but I use YouTube for stuff, right? Um, the technical solution that I've come up with for now with one kid is if my daughter's aware of a YouTube video, video or, or we find one together, and I'll talk about that idea, um, I, I actually download it using something called YouTube DL. Tom, I think you turned on that, right? And I put it on our home Plex server, I make sure it's cool, and then I, I set up the Plex and refresh it, and then she can watch that one video. I'm not sure how sustainable that's going to be going forward. <laughs> I, I remember being so proud of myself for finding that one way to make that one little thing okay. But it doesn't really work out. Uh, the, the thing that I'm understanding is a problem for older kids who have PCs uh, and devices is that uh, all kinds of crap can get into your house. It, it reminds me of those training videos I have to watch at work about phishing and all my coworkers that fall for that. And uh, I may have occasionally fallen for something, but uh, this is something that I understand could be a problem. And there's technical solutions and education solutions. I just hope they're, uh, I hope the kids are a little easier to deal with than some of the folks. Uh, I want to joke and say in marketing, but I don't know how that's going to go over the general crowd. But uh, it's not just marketing. Some of our devs do it too. Um, yeah, the other thing I touched on a little bit was the identity theft thing, and that, that's one of the big threats. Uh, kids are ending up with credit histories before they have credit. Um, I'm actually thinking about, and I'll, I'll sur survey the population here, th thinking about maybe paying for a service to check that once in a while. Uh, I didn't think I'd ever have to do something like that, but uh, you never know. All right, so what, what are my constraints at home? Um, Bluey always has to work. That's the one rule in the house especially during COVID. Anything that I do technically to the house, to the network, my wife doesn't care. I don't blame her. She's a user. She gets, her requirement is the kids not to scream after bath time, and Bluey stops that from happening. It's magical. And if I mess with the network or have to do anything, she doesn't care what the reason is. And then when I think about it in re reverse, I wouldn't care what the reason is either. I just want to watch the show, make the kids stop screaming. It's an incredibly piercing sound. Um, so no matter what I do, that has to work. 
I actually have a backup to my Plex server to make sure Bluey, uh, which I've acquired uh, in various ways, can always flow. Whether the streaming service cancels, the subscription cancels. Uh, I can share some of those techniques privately, but that's the big technique. The second thing is I, I can't be a network engineer, even if I were one. I can't set the, a system up that's so complex that no one else can figure it out. Because invariably, I'm going to be gone on travel that, that day or doing something, and that's when the crap breaks. That's when Bluey stops. That, that's when my wife can't work. That's when some, something I did in the network to, I'm not even going to use it, <laughs> DNS, blah, 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 pie hole, all that crap. If it doesn't work and someone can't come down and fix it, I'm hosed. So I've really struggled with this part, and I'll talk about that. The other thing that I started letting the kids do is play, play games, and I know uh, it sounds crazy, right? Let them play games and have fun. Um, monster. It's horrible, right? I was kind of a monster of my NES, but uh, I, I found that in, in my vast research, and, and with much of Jake's help, that the Nintendo Switch has some really good parental controls, and I, I'm okay gi giving control to Nintendo for certain things. They, they, they let you do things, and I have certain game rules that I will exercise at some, some point when I put it on the internet, <laughs> which I haven't done yet. Um, we, we have rules about, you know, you, you can't chat with people that you don't know. We, we want to control that. Any kind of open world stuff with other pe people is a no, 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 and I understand that does a pretty good job with that. If not, then I'll call Jake and cry, but... They've actually put some work into that, so it's not a terrible thing. I don't know about the other systems. Uh, she's talked about Roblox, Minecraft, and I have to learn about that, that stuff, which is another tenant here. So when I think about the uh, layers of the, it really shouldn't be a cake. It should be something more horrible than miserable. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, think of things and ways to take, take care of things. One's education, and I can't just talk to her and tell her things because that's a punishment in the house, and Daddy gives you a lecture on something. So I'll go on for an hour about anything. A any other daddies like that? Mommies like that? Yep. Let me tell you why. <sighs> you gonna learn today. Yep. And there'll be a test, and you're going to write an essay. And I'm kind of a miserable dad, I think. Um, so there, there's ways to do that, I'm sure, that are better. I'll talk about that. Surveillance. Uh, I tell the kids uh, everything has to be visible, right? We do things in the open. She wants to take her laptop to write notes and go, go, to, go to her bedroom. And I, I've had to say no, and she'll say, what about privacy? And I'll say, if you want privacy, I'll give you a, a, a lock and a key and a journal and a piece of paper. And she likes that. But that's the only way you really get privacy. This technology stuff, this is an illusion of privacy. No one really has it. Um, I don't know if I'd read her journal or not. I probably wouldn't want to. But as long as it's on paper and it's locked in a regular box, I, I'm learning to be OK with that. If it's on a notebook or it's on a computer and it's on the internet, it's tough. Um, so, and I started, I, I use Google Family. I guess one of the things that I've learned too is that you, maybe it's not true now, but you, you kind of have to stick to the ecosystem of the stuff that you're working in. You're a Google Family, you're an Apple Family. I guess you can mix. Maybe someone can share that later, but it's a lot easier if you don't because it's a lot to learn. And we, we kind of learn every day anyway, right? So, uh, I, I did the Google Family thing, and I checked every single box. I said, I want to know it. everything happens. Double logins, all this crap. And man, what a miserable experience that was for both of us. <laughs> so I'm having to learn to back off on that. And as long as she's in a room using the thing where I can check stuff, and I'll do spot checks, I'm really thinking about uh, loosening that up a little bit. Uh, content filters, maybe not. But the, you can really put, put yourself in a horrible position where you have to click, re-log in, click a box, this app, this site, this thing. Uh, I understand uh, from, oh, I'm blanking on your name, but I know you. <laughs> this awesome fellow over here, right? Kindle is now a viable contender for decent kid stuff, right? Uh, I think so. Um, it's the best with the monthly kids before I'll have the kids plus plan. I think I'm ready to pay the monthly kids out on kids plus plan. When I first got the Kindles, they were just ad infested garbage and I tried to root one and I had a bad experience. But that was maybe 10 years ago or something like that. So I'm sure things change, well, which is. I'll try it this year for 10 years exactly as you just described. Fantastic. All right. So some of my knowledge is still current. Uh, can I get a time check quick? I'm probably. But I'll keep talking. Uh, I, I wish this was how things went in my house with me educating my kids and it probably should be, right? I'm trying to sit down more with my daughter, but it, we have some different learning styles. 
Uh, she doesn't like me to tell her what to do. <laughs> and I don't enjoy the experience when we're finished. <laughs> Anyone have a? <laughs> Nick, thanks. Yeah, so uh, that, that, that's probably the way it should, should be. Uh, we're working on that. I, I keep buying kits. Did you, what, three, four? Oh, 10, good, all right, I can keep talking. My kids would hate me. Um, one of the things that I've, I've learned, this is a, I don't know if it's a pro tip or what, but whenever I, my, my, my kid signs into a site, I tell her to make up a, I probably had to be careful with this, make up a birth date, make up a name, make up all this stuff. You don't want to use your real stuff. We make profiles on Disney and ask for your kid's birth date. And I know they have to do that legally for some reason, but it creeps me out that someone's asking for my kid's real birth date. So I, I've been doing this sort of ad hoc approach of saying, well, your, your, your birthday is not October, whatever it is. See, I'm not being fish now, right? It's December something. Make it Christmas, I don't care. Don't make yourself too old. And again, that, after a while, it starts to feel like I'm teaching her how to impersonate somebody else. But uh, I don't like the idea of her real information being out there uh, any more than it probably already is on social media. Uh, I forget why this slide's there, but it's probably, oh, it's probably because you should probably sit in a nice public place to do your interneting if you're a kid, right? Um, we need to make one of those at home. Uh, I understand the kids want a quiet place to do things, so I've actually toyed with the idea. I don't know if this has worked for anybody else. My work at home scenario, maybe I put a table in there for her and give her a headset. I don't know if that's a great idea or not, but I'm willing to do that. I'm not really good at adjusting my own uh, work styles and things. That's another thing I'm trying to adjust to. Uh, another suggestion that, that I've seen happen when we talk about, uh, there's ways that you, you can put timers on devices so they go on and off at night and internet shuts on and off at night. But one of the things that I'm, I'm working with now is everything at night from everybody, me sometimes, <laughs> right, needs to go into its own sort of bin so that no one has access to anything after a certain time of night. It's what I should be doing for myself unless I have my burner phone for reading Reddit at night. Perfect, it's just perfectly normal. I'll be getting that question now. I'll probably get a suggestion for burner phones now from uh, Amazon when I go check it tonight. Yeah, I don't know how that works, and that's okay. Uh, we're, we're in a pretty much a hell no with the social media, and I'm gonna hold that as long as I can. I don't wanna think about blockers, I don't wanna think about anything else. All this stuff's the devil I've had friends in law enforcement tell me Snapchat's bad, and I've learned to recognize the logo. The Facebook, I have it, and we're trying to get away from posting on it. I'm trying to get away from every part of it that I can, but there's always some, some, something that pulls me back in, right? YouTube and I have a very uh, complicated relationship. I'm trying not to take that out of my, my kids. How well does that work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes, I thought about it. I, I couldn't think of, the, of a great slide to put up for the idea that uh, what's the worst thing that someone else will ever do on your behalf when the worst thing happens to your kid? W what's the most action that'll probably be taken? You get a three month identity protection service worth $24.99 if you provide your credit card. So for whatever reason, anything terrible happens to your kid, that's the worst that's gonna happen. So it's kind of up to you to figure this stuff out. Uh, and by the time your kid comes to you with a, with a problem or a situation because, I don't know, I'll, I'll throw my brother-in-law under the bus again. Uh, your kid's seen the My Little Pony when he's be dismembered by a cartoon chainsaw, perfectly rendered. You're gonna have to figure out how to talk to your kid about it. I don't know the answer yet, uh, but I figure I'm gonna have to do it. I've tried to dodge it. Um, now the quick technology solution, this is the stuff I don't know as much about, but I'll talk about my network with pretty pictures. <laughs> This is where I was about, uh, I don't know, 2717. I had the uh, Xfinity all router of all my devices on the same net network, which I understand is very bad. Who's the, someone yells at me a lot for that, and rightly so. Where's, uh, where's Paul? Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure he can hear me, but he's always telling me, no, no, don't do that. He's gonna know, it's all right. That, that was me 2017. I didn't get much better. So we have all this crap, right? The Switch, the, uh, maybe the Switch wasn't there, I don't know. Uh, the Roku has always been there, the TTV. Two work computers, a printer, that school computer, a tablet, a Plex server, all this stuff. Uh, and I've overcomplicated my life. And then I don't know if we had the watch at that point, but 
cloud storage, all this stuff, and it's all connected to, to the same thing because it's too stressful to do it some other way. And then I thought, okay, I'm gonna make it a little better. I'll get my own modem, I'll get my own router, but it's still the same, still the same thing, right? And I start to think about how much effort's re required to maintain the, the solution uh, as I go deeper and deeper. Then I thought, okay, we have VPNs at work. No big deal, now I don't need to worry about those two things. I don't know if that's true or not. But at least, uh, I can still work and my wife can still work. It, it does violate my rule about the television being able to always work, but uh, that's where I was and that's kind of where I still am. The next thing, which Paul might approve of if he didn't dispute my use of icons for non-specific things, <laughs> putting stuff on a separate network and having little locks on everything, right? I don't know how well that works. Uh, there's a million ways to do it and this is where I've lost my way completely. Uh, ask somebody, they'll say, I think it's you that always says, just go on eBay and get a Dell and install OpenSense, BFSense, and just learn how the IP table stuff works. And I'm thinking, God, I don't wanna. I have a job, I have three kids. But you have to, I don't know. My, my router says it does things, but what happens if it breaks? There's a guy on a forum that I can talk to that was there five years ago that had the same problem. What do I do? Uh, I probably need to get some better stuff. So this is where I'm kind of at this threshold of like, all right, I do IT stuff for work. I have stuff at home. Can I just buy something that just works? I don't think the answer is yes. I think I'm gonna have to learn some more. Maybe some, someone else, when I, if I have time for questions, if I haven't gone over, is there a way to get something that just sort of works? I can uh, drive myself nuts with analysis paralysis, right? Um, what is this? Oh, this is a DNS thing. I've wrestled with this too. So Comcast stopped, uh, started blocking some of my favorite sites where I was getting some of my favorite uh, backup entertainment. And I realized that Comcast is owned by NBC and this made me grumpy because the streaming services I subscribed to were not retaining my favorite selections. As I was com compulsively or com com as the victim of a compulsory switch from a sub subscription model or to a subscription model from a uh, own, own my own stuff. Regardless, it, it seemed like a bad idea, and I'm sure there's more virtuous reasons to use a different DNS server than Comcast. So I figured that out. Then it got more complicated. Uh, someone told me to buy a pie hole to get a pie hole. That was you, right? And it seemed like a good idea, and I tried it. Uh, I drove myself nuts with analysis paralysis. So you can get devices, uh, you can set your whole network to go to a DNS that's cleaner, and I think that's a good layer of security for some, some things, right? It'll take care of most bad things. Uh, maybe there's ways to get some of your favorite good, good things back out of it. Uh, there's the DNS filtering on, on your network with whatever that device is that blocks all the things and does all the good things. Uh, my concern again was what happens if I have to back this out? Um, Tom has not agreed to be on call for me. <laughs> Although he's pretty good at re responding, uh, but he's very nice about that. I don't wanna, my pie hole's gone. The kids are screaming, what do I do, Tom? I have a fake Tom that I call because Tom doesn't answer his phone when I call him. <laughs> um, so this is where I'm at a threat. This is where I'm at a crossroads. Do I learn all this stuff, do all this crazy stuff and make it work? Tom says it works great and Tom can do it. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what this is. This is the problem. I forget things. Why do I have more? Wait a minute. Am I going forward or back backwards? We'll see. Oh, yes. Ha. Huh. This is another problem. Maybe I shouldn't be in charge of any passwords or any routers at all. Because this is what I feel like most days. Anyone seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure? I start going down the path of trying to figure out what, what to get, what to buy. I, I ask somebody, it's by Adele. I ask someone else, buy a UPS, but don't buy the, don't get one new, get the battery from eBay. And I go down these solutions where I want to do the best technical thing possible and I can't. So I don't know the real solution, which is why <laughs> I would love to know how guys are handling this stuff, are you all? So anything resonate, any particular problems, any? any Has the test bought the sale of firewall buffers? Sorry, say again? So like I have a firewall, it's a consumer grade firewall, it's supposed to be part of my Adobe Mesh Network. Um, because of the one I have, I can't do too much segmentation, but it's too big and I can't do too much. profile that space restrictions and 
You don't have to say it's okay. No, We're all friends here. The guy, yeah. the guy who's like turning a, a Mustang into a you know a diesel drag racer because it's nice and cool out there. You know, so there's great example. I'm gonna when you start put that. something at that level of the network, it's great that it's all on top, and it's great to sort of make consumer grade and make weekly and make it a little easier to figure out what's coming to town. But when you do that, you make it you push that pitch point down. Family-friendly cloud storage in NAS was blocking data. I didn't know. So I had to you know, switch everything over to the regular cloud storage to get this one small thing to work. <coughs> it's probably worth it because my kids aren't really online right now. But it just goes to show, if you make that one weekly thing, you don't know the actual what's going to impact. So you mess up that one thing, you probably do need to make it. And I wish that I had something that could just be like a plug and play thing. Now I have a whole other thing to think about. I was looking at firewalls today. It's very bold of you to put a device like that on the on the net network, but. Human systems always fail, don't they? So right. it's just another um, um, cloud storage that you don't want to be putting your server at home when you are trying to get all this stuff up to the server and then wait for people to come through. Sometimes that's a safer place for me than being upstairs with the. It is. It is indeed. But having to actually fix things, that's another problem. So. Not a bad idea. I like that. <laughs> all right. I think that's all I have. I have I run? I think I run a foul of time. But thank you. And uh, and anyone who wouldn't mind me bugging them later, I'm happy to compensate you, but not hold you responsible for my outcome. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, how do I turn this thingy off? Thanks. Seven days, seven great years. We'll take two minutes, and uh, we'll get this thing all set up.